नमस्कार स्वागत है आप सभी का ई विद्या चैनल नंबर नाइन पर मैं हूं देवेंद्र त्रिपाठी क्लास नाइन्थ के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए इस सेशन में हम इंग्लिश का सब्जेक्ट लेकर आए हैं और इसके अंतर्गत एक बहुत ही इम्पॉर्टेंट और बहुत यूज़फुल जो कि आपके लिए न सिर्फ आज की न आज की नहीं बल्कि आपके इस एकेडमिक सेशन में काम आने वाला है बल्कि आने वाले वर्षों में भी इस सत्र के माध्यम से जो सीखेंगे वो आपको फ़ायदा करेगा और कई बार लाइफ में इस तरह की चीज़ें हमेशा मदद करती हैं और ये है राइटिंग डिस्क्रिप्टिव पैराग्राफ और यूथ आज का जो है नाइन्थ क्लास की बात अगर हम करें तो एक ऐसी एज है जो इस समय टेक्नोलॉजी से काफ़ी हद तक जुड़ा हुआ है और उसके लिए डिस्क्रिप्शन या डिस्क्रिप्टिव शब्द नया नहीं होगा लेकिन इसको लिखते कैसे हैं इसको इस्तेमाल कैसे करते हैं ये या अगर आप नहीं जानते हैं तो ये भी जान पाएंगे और ये सब कुछ बताने के लिए हमारे साथ जुड़ चुके हैं मेंटर और टीचर हैं टीजीटी इंग्लिश हैं रजोकरी दिल्ली सर्वोदय कन्या विद्यालय में जागृति सिंह मैम मैम आपको बहुत बहुत स्वागत है नमस्कार सर नमस्कार और आप जैसा कि जानते हैं इस इंटरेक्टिव लाइव सेशन का हिस्सा खुद भी बन सकते हैं और कुछ आपके मन में सवाल क्वेश्चंस आपके मन में हो तो उन्हें आप हम तक पहुंचा सकते हैं हमारी एक्सपर्ट से बात कर सकते हैं इसके लिए आप नोट कर सकते हैं हमारा फ़ोन नंबर फ़ोन नंबर है डबल एट डबल ज़ीरो डबल फोर ज़ीरो डबल फाइव नाइन और ईमेल एड्रेस के माध्यम से भी आप हम तक अपनी बात पहुंचा सकते हैं ईमेल एड्रेस नोट कर सकते हैं डी टी तो इन माध्यमों से हमारे साथ बने रहिए और आगे बढ़ाते हैं बिना किसी विलम्ब के और सबसे पहला प्रश्न है चूँकि टाइटल या टॉपिक है राइटिंग डिस्क्रिप्टिव पैराग्राफ ये क्या है और इससे क्या समझना चाहिए और क्या इम्पॉर्टेंस है और साथ ही साथ ये भी मैं पूछना चाहूँगा कि क्लास नाइन्थ के स्टूडेंट्स के लिए एग्ज़ाम्स में इसका कितना महत्व है मैम हाँ जी सर सो आजकल की व्हाट्सएप के ज़माने में जैसे कि हमें पता है वी आर नॉट यूज टू राइटिंग टू मच स्टूडेंट्स आर ऑल्सो यूज टू राइटिंग वेरी शॉर्ट सेंटेंसेज एक्रोनिम्स यस होती है येस एंड they need to learn the skill of describing things right so right. this is a particular question in their question paper that is of 5 marks right. and this is the descriptive paragraph today we will be doing a session for revising all the format and how they can write better descriptive paragraphs so i'll be giving some tips and tricks to write beautiful paragraphs in their exams right so uh तो ये सब आपने समझ लिया कि पांच नंबर आपको मिलेंगे इस पर अगर आपने अच्छे से लिखा तो लेकिन कैसे लिखना है शॉर्टकट में लिखना तो सीख चुके हैं लेकिन उसको ज़्यादा डिटेल में कैसे आप किसी भी चीज़ के बारे में चाहे वो कहीं आप गए उस जगह की जो आपकी आपका जो एक्सपीरियंस रहा या कोई फिल्म आपने देखी कोई इवेंट आपने देखा तो उसको कैसे डिस्क्राइब करेंगे अपने स्कूल के किसी इवेंट के बारे में कैसे डिस्क्राइब करेंगे ये सब जानेंगे जी मैम शुरुआत करते हैं हाँ जी सर सो पहला ही हमारा सवाल ये आता है द क्वेश्चन दैट कम्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इन आर माइंड इज वॉट इज अ डिस्क्रिप्टिव पैराग्राफ एंड वॉट इज डिस्क्रिप्टिव पैराग्राफ राइटिंग सो एज द नेम इज सजेस्टिंग वी डिस्क्राइब थिंग्स सो हेयर इन पर्टिकुलर क्वेश्चन वी हैव टू डिस्क्राइब अ पर्सन अ प्लेस और सम इवेंट हैपनिंग एज यू हैव टोल्ड जस्ट नाउ एंड द क्वेश्चन हैज सम विजुअल एंड वर्बल क्लूज सो विजुअल मीन्स some picture will be shown right. and verbal means some hints or facts will be given that will be described by the students right so this is a five marker questions for them and let's move ahead so we have a format for this descriptive paragraph you cannot write it just like that you have a proper flow of thoughts and a descriptive paragraph has three important components the first one is introduction right. where the students will introduce their topic in an interesting way so that the reader will become interested in reading the rest of your paragraph right. which means the first two sentences one or two sentences have to be very interesting otherwise the person will not read it further the examiner will not read it further the second important element is body which is the biggest part where students need a bit of skill to write and a lot of practice for which we'll discuss some exercises also so here they dwell on the topic more by giving elaborate details so giving uh, using good vocabulary and some interesting details have to be given in this part of the paragraph and final but very important element is conclusion where the paragraph has to be closed 
and the students have to give an overall overall statement which ends their writing piece perfectly. So, they should not be abrupt when they are ending the paragraph. So, so as we discussed we had three we have three types of paragraphs three types of questions come in exams where they have to describe people. Now, when we are describing people what do you think we describe in people? Right. So, so these uh, these points uh, which you are looking on PPT uh, is very important points uh, which can help you to uh, describing things, how uh, you can describe people, how you can describe places and how describe events. So, uh, yes, so if I have to describe some person or people, right. I will use their height, what kind of height they have, they are tall, short or medium heighted what kind of build of their body is there, thin, strong, sturdy, fat or complexion whether they are dark, fair or pale. Other features that they can include to describe the people are whether they have facial hair like beard, moustache, eyebrows or they have a long face or a, a round face or an oval face. Also there is appearance, how do they appear, when I first look at the person how do they look they are good looking, charming, smart, handsome or they are simpleton. Simpleton means a very simple person who is not used to doing a lot of makeup or anything. Right. So, if you have to write about Mahatma Gandhi ji, you have to think about his yes. stature, yes. His, his personality. Yes. As we know Mahatma Gandhi had not very, he was not very tall, he had a short height, yes. but his hands were very long. Okay. His hands were longer than his knees, they reached his knees. Uh, this is abnormal. Yeah, which is an unusual thing. Unusual. So, we can mention the unusual things or observations that we have about people and we can include that in our paragraphs. Right, right. So, we can include their qualities also like they are sincere, diligent, kind, intelligent, selfish or soft spoken. Like I can say about you that you are very soft spoken. Right. So, next one is describing places. Now, when do we have to describe places like I have been to a vacation and I have been to a new place, then I describe the location of the place. Right. So, if I may ask you where was your last holiday, where did you go for holiday? I went uh, in Kashi Vishwanath. Okay, Kashi Vishwanath. Right. That is good. So, uh, you gave me the name of the place, now you can tell me the location, where is Kashi Vishwanath located? It is located in East Uttar Pradesh, that is in Varanasi. Yes, and any history about the place? Uh, there are so many uh, Ganga Ghats and uh, the yes. beautiful and ancient uh, uh, mythological, uh, spiritual. Yes, uh, so this is also relations. a special thing about the place that it is a holy place. Right. People go there to uh, offer their prayers Worships, to God. Yes. yes. And what is found, what you found interesting in the place? Uh, uh, when I went there, the new uh, corridor, Kashi Vishwanath corridor has been developed. Yes. After that, I went there and it was build, built very beautifully. Yes, yes. So, would you recommend other people to visit definitely, Kashi Vishwanath? Definitely. So, that is how we describe a place. So, right. you just now spoke about it. The students have to write about it in a descriptive manner using the format that we gave in the first part of the session. Okay. So, now coming to events, what kind of events happen around us, birthdays, parties or maybe in school they have one mahotsav or annual functions or book donation drives, there right. can be events also. Right, uh, or uh, uh, book exhibitions, uh, book fairs. Yes, book fairs, book, book fairs. exhibitions. Yes. So, when we are describing an event, the details that we focus upon are name of the event right. and details of the event. Up details, what are details of the event, right. when was the event held or what happened exactly in the event, who came as a chief guest or maybe who were the people who were participating in the event right. and what was the, why was the event important. Right. Like, like if we have a book fair, so what is the importance of a book fair? Right, right. So, these, these points, these tips uh, can help you in writing about people, place or event. So, if you have, uh, uh, I, I would like to ask ma'am to suggest uh, uh, 
uh, recent past few events yes. to our viewers, to our learners, so that they can uh, take uh, that event or that person uh, to write yes. this thing. So, the most re re recent event that comes to my mind is the Republic Day. Right. We can uh, describe the Republic Day parade as well or the students can describe the function that is held in their school. Right. So, name of the event would be Republic Day function at the school and in the detail we would add it occurred on 25th of January because it generally in schools it is celebrated one day before, before because right. we are in Delhi. Right. Otherwise, it is celebrated the same day same in day. other states. Right, right. And what happened during the Republic Day? The national flag was unfurled by the principal or someone prominent from the community came and they unfurled the national flag. Right. And this was the 75th Republic Day as right. it was announced and as we are proud of completing 75 years of Republic of India. India right. On the same day in 1950, uh, India became Republic. Yes. So, these are the details, they need to add those details, who all, who all were the people who came, what kind of uh, events, other events like uh, dances were there or patriotic songs were there or speeches were spoken by students, they can add more details to the paragraph. Right. So, on, on the given email address that was dts.class9 at the rate cit.nig.in, if you write the uh, uh, passage, if you write a descriptive paragraph on a Republic Day, you can send it on that mail. And ma'am, can you suggest any uh, spot in any place uh, to our viewers uh, for describing uh, in paragraph? Uh, place for their choice? They can? Yes, I will be giving some examples and homework for them for okay. later. Okay, okay. So that they can describe other places. Right. But before that, we have something for them in the tips section that I would like to focus upon. Okay. So, you can see there are these acronyms. Okay. So, uh, can you describe the uh, meaning of acronyms you are displaying in PPT? Yes. So, these acronyms are basically tips and tricks that students need to follow when they are writing the descriptive paragraph. Acronyms means short form, abbreviated form. So, the first thing when they are writing the paragraph during the process, we have an acronym called CODER, C O D E R, C for collecting ideas, okay. which means first you need to collect all the ideas related to the given topic. Then O is for organizing the ideas, you have to organize these ideas properly and sequentially. Then drafting your ideas, you have to draft proper sentences. If you are uh, very worried about the grammar, you need to frame small simple sentences, but they have to be correct. Okay. And then coming to editing the draft, we have written the draft, now we will edit the draft and then after the last step will be rewriting the paragraph after editing it. And for these steps also we have two more acronyms, one is ARMS, A R M S. So, this one comes when you are editing your draft. So, when you are editing and organizing your draft, you can add a word or a new sentence, you can remove a word R for remove or you can remove a sentence. Then M is move a word, you think that the word is not at the appropriate place, you can move it to the appropriate place. And then S is for substitute a word, substitute when do we need to substitute? When we want to use a proper or good vocabulary, good words in our descriptive right. writing. Right. So, the last one as you can see is cups. Cups. So, cups is C U P S. This is for editing and checking the basic grammatical mistakes. When you have already written, drafted the paragraph, you have to check for these. So, th uh, uh, it is third step of the uh, writing description. Yes, paragraph. this is for editing the. So, Coder, arms and cups. Yes. There are three acronyms. Yes. The those can be learned by learners. Yes. And these uh, acronyms can help their descriptive paragraph. Yes, writing. this will make it better. Better. And they will score better marks. So, so kindly confirm, uh, kindly uh, explain the third one. Yes, the yeah. third one is cups. Yeah. C for checking the capital letters. The most common mistake that that children make is 
not using capital letters at the beginning of every sentence, sentence. and sometimes in between also when we are talking about nouns. nouns. Then comes you, you is for usage, usage of words, usage of tenses, you are using the tenses correctly and you are using the vocabulary and words correctly. Right. Then we have P for punctuation. Punctuation is their full stop, question mark, exclamatory mark. So, they have to look for those mistakes. If there is any, they need to correct it. And the last one is spelling. You have to check for all the beautiful words that you have used. So, you need to know the correct spelling, then only you are suggested to use these words. If you do not know the usage and spelling of the word, please avoid using these difficult words. Right. So, these three acronyms, coder, arms and cups, arm and cups. Arms. Arms. Yes. A R M S. Yes. And cups. You can note down these acronyms and their detail, so that these uh, can help you to making, uh, to writing a descriptive paragraph. And you were talking about exercise. Yes, now. we have some exercises also that the students can practice for writing description of very simple daily objects. Right. So, these can be, here are some exercises. We can see these exercises are visualize and describe. Right. Take a simple object like an apple or a pencil and try to vividly describe it using sensory details. Now, what is vividly? So, we have two terms vivid and vague. Vague is when we are not giving any details, vivid is when we are giving very specific details of the object or the person or the place that we are describing. Right. And sensory details, what are sensory details? Using all five senses. So, when okay. a person is reading our paragraph, they need to engage with all five senses, what I see, what they can smell, what they can hear, what they can talk about, what were the people talking, what kind of noises were coming at the place they were there, if we can talk, if we talk about the marketplace. Right. So, what do we see in a marketplace? Definitely, they can, uh, the readers can uh, yeah. feel yes. the, and they can, if they can, they are able to visualize the picture. Yes. It gives a vivid picture to vivid the picture to reader, reader with details. Right, right. So, maybe if you want to try, how would you describe an apple? Um, uh, first of all, I would like to talk about the color of the apple. Yes. The taste of the apple. Yes. And the uh, when we usually uh, find it in market. Yes, yes. The season. Yes. So, you are giving the details, how you taste it, how you see it and maybe sometimes you can tell about the shape. shape. If we talk about an orange, you will right. say it is a round fruit. Round. So, there are two ways, either I can describe in one sentence, I can say about an apple, it is a fruit. Right. I can finish it there right. or maybe I can add some details. Right. Also, we can try, can you describe water? Definitely, it is col colorless. Yes, water is colorless. colorless. Yes. And does it have a taste? No. No. Can you see through water? Yes. Sometimes we can see. Yeah. Yes. It depends, it is, it depends yes. on clarity of the water. Yes, exactly. Clarity of the water. Right. So, these are the details that we need to add when we are writing a descriptive paragraph. Something right. as simple as water can be described vividly. We can add details like what is, uh, what is the other scientific name of water? What do we say? H2O. Right. So, we can add these details. Now, coming to the next exercise, it is describing a picture or photo. Choose an intriguing, intriguing photograph and write a descriptive paragraph based on the image, capturing the essence and atmosphere. So, there are some pictures, we can have some pictures and we can describe those pictures. Sometimes it can be described in one sentence right. and sometimes it can be described in detail. Right, right. So, if I show you this picture, can you see this picture? What do you think this is? This is I think uh, metro station. Yes, and it uh, is. Metro also standing at the station. Yes, the train is waiting at the station maybe right. for the passengers. Right. So, in one sentence we can say it is a metro station, but we can add details that it is standing at the station and waiting for passengers. passengers. And there are not too many passengers, 
around right like and we about you uh, uh, it can be uh, writ, uh, write about the station's uh, shape yes also. they can write about the roof of the station it is lighted and it is a bit round In the shape. ceiling is yes yes so they can add details and they can improve their right. writing so right. this is how pictures are described, described and this is a visual clue that is given in questions also for children to describe. Now, we have another exercise that is setting description. Imagine a specific setting such as a haunted house okay. or a bustling city street Eat. and describe it in a way that transports the reader there. So, you have to tell about the haunted house. If you can remind, uh, remember any such house from your childhood any haunted haunted house yes uh, actually i it was not my experience some okay. people are uh, say uh, used to say okay. that there is something uh, in the paranormal house. activities yes. paranormal powers uh, that can impact uh, people who are there uh, who they are going yes there. so sometimes it in it is not us who have experienced it but we have heard from somewhere yes. and we can add those details in the paragraph also to make it interesting. To make it interesting. Right. Yes. So, that so can people connect, they can uh, 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 identify, identify and help. Yes. 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 Right. So, next one is character descri description. This is also one practice that children can do. They have a lot of character in their stories and chapters of the English book. When they use the descriptive technique, they can describe the characters, their as we talked about height, their qualities, their build and their experiences through their experiences they can describe the characters also. The fifth one is using figurative language which means they have to use very beautiful language which has literary devices like similes, metaphors where we compare people to some things. What is a simile? A child as pretty as a flower. So, a language like this improves their descriptive paragraph right so, so we have so some tips, tips also yes yes i was waiting for that yes so these tips are to be kept in mind when they are writing the paragraph in the exam right. the first thing is an interesting start so you have to start with a bang the first sentence should make an impact and the reader or the examiner should continue reading your paragraph paragraph then give a vivid description. We already talked about the description and sensory details right. in the uh, last, last part of the session. Right. And then they have to organize and structure the paragraph. They need to keep in mind that there is a sequence. First the introduction will come, then the body part and then it has to end, end with a conclusion. Now keeping the topic in focus, they do not have and they should not distract from the given topic, they should not divert from it, they should keep their focus on the topic and highlight the key points. Sometimes the key points are given in the question and they have to be highlighted and be a part of the paragraph. And as I told you, the sentences should be simple and they should be varied. Some sentences should be small, some should be Long, uh, long to create interest and prevent monotony and express your uh, uh, things yes express what you are trying to trying to say yes opinions, opinions and ideas right, yes. right so they should have a proper conclusion we have emphasized this enough but still it is a very important part and we need to keep this in mind conclude your descriptive paragraph and stick to the word mm. limit that is most essential that you have 100 words limit and you can make it to 120, but not more than that because you have 5 marks and you have to have this number of words in your paragraph. So, these were very important tips for descriptive uh, paragraph writing, but I would like to one more ma'am. Yes. Uh, if you permit me, I would like to say uh, uh, recommend children and students to write diary yes. for their daily experiences for their daily uh, learnings. Yes. So, that is a very good suggestion. It right. will improve their writing practice. Writing practice. Yes. 
and uh, definitely it will uh, help their uh, them for the whole life yes. uh, because kai bar aisa hota hai ki hame na likhne ki aadat apni baaton ko na kehne ki aadat kam hone ki wajah se jab hame kuch bada likhna hota hai kisi ko chitthi likhni hoti hai later likhna hota hai jab hum professional life mein hote hain to hame kathinaiyan hoti hain haan ji haan ji so we need to keep practice writing and keep observing and putting that on paper तो मैम ने जितनी भी टिप्स आपको दिए हैं उन टिप्स को अपनाइए और डिस्क्रिप्टिव पैराग्राफ राइटिंग में जितना नंबर मिलता है ना जितने नंबर का होता है वो पूरा नंबर आपको जरूर मिलेगा हाँ जी जरूर जी थैंक यू त्रिपाठी जी फॉर असिस्टिंग एंड हेल्पिंग मी धन्यवाद आपका मैम कि आपने इतने अच्छे तरीके से इस चैप्टर को हमारे आज के लर्नर्स के लिए व्यूअर्स के लिए इसको इंटरेस्टिंग भी बनाया और मुझे लगता है कि बच्चे ही नहीं बल्कि उनके माता पिता जो पेरेंट्स हैं वो हमारे साथ जुड़ते हैं विद्या के साथ और कई सारे शिक्षक भी जुड़ते हैं तो जो इस क्षेत्र के नहीं हैं जो लिटरेचर के फील्ड के नहीं हैं उनके लिए भी ये ज़रूर हेल्पफुल रहा हाँ। होगा जी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू सो मच और आप सभी का भी बहुत बहुत शुक्रिया धन्यवाद आप सभी का लगातार हमारे साथ बने रहने के लिए और आग्रह करूँगा ई विद्या के साथ इसी तरह से बने रहिए शिक्षा और जागरूकता के कार्यक्रमों के लिए अब दीजिए मुझे अनुमति आज का सत्र यहीं समाप्त करने के लिए धन्यवाद नमस्कार